see how this works. You can't just have a sandwich. Oh, 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 oh. No. Merry Christmas, everybody. Scary, no. scary, scary, scary Santa. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this Santa? Rudy. Rudy? Your projector. Right. He's my body. Right? I believe you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. So, uh, go ahead. Have a seat there, Santa. Well, it, it doesn't just Good have morning, to hold everybody. It doesn't just have to hold you. It's Santa in a chair. Uh, <laughs> okay, he was kidding. All right. I guess I won't. There you go. He, he gave you proof. Oh. All right. Oh, Lord. Um, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I've been thinking about losing some weight. <laughs> so, Santa, before I get to my list, uh, it's 11 pages long. Oh, um, You are a busy man. I am. Yes. And you have a lot of things to do to get ready for Christmas. Oh, you never know. Yeah? Like, um, like all of those lists, those naughty and nice lists. Uh, How one you... room. How do you get those together? Well, it's magical. It's magical. It's a secret. It's a secret. But if I told her it's a secret, I'd have to kill you on sleep. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, that doesn't you sound like the Santa we know. But are more people on the naughty side or are more people on the nice side this year? Actually, this year is a record-breaking nice side. Oh, but I'm glad good you asked. Good news. Good news. I'm glad you asked. I have something for you. You, you have something for me? I do. OK. We planned none of this. <laughs> it's a magical bag you gotta dig. A magical bag you gotta dig. So what do you get, Russ? It must have fell out. I, it must have fell out. Right here. I hope it didn't break. No, it won't break. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Well, while we're talking about that then, um, you, you've got to get, so you got the naughty and nice list. You gotta get all the reindeer ready. Uh -oh. Reindeer are on a heavy, heavy schedule. All year long, training regiment. Um, Rudolph is a little out of hand. He thinks he's a star. But um, we, the only thing we really do from the Christmas Eve. No, thank you. I don't trust UPS. <laughs> uh, the only thing we do with the reindeer is cut them down on the alfalfa right before Christmas because it's hard right behind them. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right, so that's the reindeer. Now, what about all the elves? I mean, half of them were here this morning. How do you get them ready? How do you get them to fit? The elves the are, are ready 24-7. They work from December 26th till December 25th. Um, sometimes they get a little rebellious, like the brass is on the other side. Oh, about 25, 30 years ago, we had a rebellion, and they all came out of North Pole. And Walt well, Disney picked them up and they ended up starring in the eyes. So that was about the only thing we had problems with. Okay, well, you got to get those ready too. And then, all right, you got one sled, one sleigh. How do you get all those gifts in that sleigh? It's magic. It's magic. It's magic. Uh, I have to give it all the magic. It's magic. I well, can't share it with you. Oh. Okay. Well, I do thank you so much, Santa, for taking time out of your schedule to come and talk with us and stay right where you're But I do want yes. to say that the naughty list wasn't very long at all, but I am pleased to say, Wes, you made it. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, thank you. Cool. <laughs> I hope this is cold out from a reindeer, right? This is hot. <laughs> Christmas series, a short Christmas series this week, and uh, it goes until Christmas. And these are the titles. Our first title this morning is Prepare the Way. Then next Sunday is Love Came Down, followed by Love Gives All, and our Christmas Eve service. 
which will be from 6 to 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, all focusing on different aspects of the Christmas story and how we enter into that. So, with that in mind, let's do our opening prayer together. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for Christmas. When you sent your son to become one like us. So that we would not see you as far away and untouchable, but as one like us. May all our hearts prepare room for your son this Christmas season and be with us and those great kids upstairs as we go about this service. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Christmas planning and preparation is something we all know about, right? All right, let's find out some things about the people here. Who here has all of your Christmas shopping done already? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four. Oh, we hate you all. <laughs> Good for you! All your Christmas shopping done already, okay? Who shops last minute? Really last minute? Okay, really? All right. Who loves to get ready for Christmas? Who loves that whole process of decorating and preparing all of that? Okay. And how many people feel more like this on the slides? Do we have... Are the slides working? They are. They're coming. It's somebody who's green. There. Who feels more like this when it comes to Christmas? Okay. Just a couple inches there. Well, it should not be a surprise that God is an not a Grinch, but an incredible preparer and planner. God is. He began planning for the coming of his son before the world was even begun. Following the creation and in the history of mankind, we find all sorts of indications that God planned and prepared for Christmas. Take, for instance, the virgin conception of Christ. That was written by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before it took place. 700 years. And about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, that particular prophecy was mentioned in the book of Micah 730 years before Jesus came. And we're going to spend some time this morning talking about John the Baptist, one of my favorite guys, somebody who prepared the way directly for Christ. And there were scriptures written about him in the book of Isaiah and Malachi. And then there was 300 years of silence until Christmas. The prophets were silent. God had all of his preparations ready and in place. So, let's take a look at John the Baptist then. Most of the, this part of the message is taken from the start of the Gospel of Mark. Starting with chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, we'll go through the first eight verses. I'll just read them all, then we'll break them down. Here we go. The good news of Jesus Christ, the message, begins here. Following to the letter, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Watch closely, I'm sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and as they confessed their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore camel hair, a habit, that was tied at his waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama 
to whom I'm a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism of the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. That's from the message version of the start of the Gospel of Mark. As we consider the topic of prepare the way, two main points, how John got prepared and how we prepare for Christmas. Who was John the Baptist? John the Baptist was a miracle baby. His parents were incredibly old, hundreds of years old, and they longed for a son. And God made it possible. So much that his mom laughed when, when she was told she was pregnant. And John, God took his voice away. John's father was unable to speak until John was dedicated to God. And this was an incredible miracle baby, John the Baptist. He was set aside for God's work from the time that he was born. <coughs> His mission summed up in one word, prepare. That was his mission, prepare. John's reason for preparation, watch closely. I'm sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival. Make the roots road smooth and straight. Think for a minute. John's conception, birth, and life were all about one thing, Jesus. He'd be the one prophesied about in both Isaiah and Malachi that says, look, I'm sending my messenger on ahead to clear the way for me. Suddenly, out of the blue, the leader you've been looking for will enter his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant, the one you've been waiting for, look. He's on his way. When he says the kingdom of God is at hand, it's that close. At hand, meaning here. God saw fit to make preparations for the Messiah through John the Baptist. He was to get people thinking about the Messiah so they wouldn't be taken by surprise because John was sent to prepare the way. How did he prepare people? In the way that God told him, he appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to the forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem as they confessed their sins were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. Picture this desert. It's 20 miles away from Judea, from Jerusalem. 20 miles, hot, dusty, desolate. The average person walks two to three miles an hour. We're talking a 10 hour walk to go see this guy in the desert, dressed simply, but with a powerful message. And on the way home, if every step was uphill for them to get back from whence they came. Not a particularly popular way. You'd think if you're trying to reach a lot of people, you'd go to the busiest place, not one of the most remote. But that's what God called him to do. And Jesus was around, but not yet visible yet. Jesus was living in the Galilee Hills. John the baptizer was preaching in the desert. And his message was simple. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. His message was this. The repentance of sin. Repentance. That's a word we don't hear a lot or use a lot. Repentance is not a feeling word like feeling sorry for your sins. No, repentance means to change direction, to turn around. That's what repent means. Also to confess sins. Why? Why? 
because when we do that, it breaks part of the power it has over us. And we need to verbalize that we are sorry and need to turn. Confession is good for the soul. And also John affirmed the coming of the Christ. And then baptism. Why? Because it cleanses. It symbolizes new life. We're going to have a baptism service this winter. We're going to take out these giant saws and, on Geneva Lake. We're going to cut a nice little area there. Everybody's going to come in close. And then anybody who wants to be baptized will send you down in the name of the Father and the Son. And our church will dwindle to no one. <laughs> So we are doing a baptism ceremony, but it'll be right in here where it's nice and warm. And we will keep the water. Baptism is a powerful sign. It's a powerful sign from God. And we'll be doing that. John the Baptist wasn't much to look at. He wore camel hair tied at his waist. If you thought we looked goofy with those Santa outfits and elf outfits on, Anybody ever been on a camel? Nobody's been on a camel? You have? You've been on a nice and smooth, soft, silky, rough and coarse is what I saw online when I looked. Yeah. I thought wool was itchy. Imagine wearing camel. Yeah. And then there's what he ate. All right, the wild locusts and honey. How many people like honey? Honey's good. Yeah. That's good. How many people like locusts? <laughs> I don't know if I'd even do that on a double dog dare. All right? I don't know if I would. I think those, those little legs that kind of get stuck in your teeth. Ugh. I love them. You love them? Now the, now, the grasshoppers I was talking about were the real ones, not the after dinner drinks, right? Yeah. Right? Just making sure. All right. John made some promises. John said that he was baptizing here in the river, turning their old life for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character of this drama, we know who that is, compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand, will ignite the kingdom life for you. A fire within you. The Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he will put out with the trash to be burned. That just continues on in Matthew. The other thing that John stood for was a part that we've talked about a couple weeks in a row. He must increase, I must decrease. Or in the message version that we read last week, that's why my cup is running over. This is the assigned moment for him to move to center while I slip off to the sidelines. John was an excellent example of that. An excellent example. John's goal was for a person to be ready to accept the Messiah as Savior and having believed to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. All the preparations was to set the stage for the entrance for the Lamb of God. What's the true meaning of Christmas? If you read the accounts of Jesus' life from conception to birth, you'll find a lot of preparation by God went into that. So, let's take a look at us getting ready for Christmas. Do we see this Christmas season as something special? Now, I don't mean special in the manner of getting gifts, going to parties, family gatherings, decorations, silly elf costumes. 
I mean, do we see the Christ in Christmas? Do we really give special meaning to his birth? Do we make preparations for him? John's life was given to the preparation for Christ's coming. That was his purpose in life. What's our purpose in life? In whatever season of life you're in, what's your purpose now? Do you know it? Have you asked God what that is? And are we pointing people towards Jesus? Are we following John's example and saying someone far greater than I is coming after us? That's the one you should follow. Those of us who know about what it's like to receive Christ, to welcome him into our lives, that's awesome. Next week, Sunday, if there's anybody in your life, in your circle of friends, who hasn't yet prepared room for Christ, ask them to come. Pray that they come. Encourage them to come next week. Because that's what we're talking about. It's going to be a great, great Sunday. Let's use this season to prepare our hearts for the Lord, for what He might want to do in our lives. John sacrificed a lot, everything really, in his life. What have we sacrificed for the Savior this season? And are we more concerned about others than ourselves? These are hard questions, but appropriate in this time of preparation for Christmas. It's good to ask those questions, and it's good to ask God those questions and to patiently and expectantly wait for his answer. What's the goal of this Christmas season? Is that it? It's not about stuff to get. It's not about stuff to give. It's not about stuffing ourselves with stuff either. Let's be interested not just interested, let's be invested in the Christmas story this year. Let's listen to what Christmas is all about. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2 in the Message Bible. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood they had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody, worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you are to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's go to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger, seeing was believing. They told 
everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. Luke 2, 8 through 17. The true story of Christmas is filled with joy, with peace, with hope. And that hope is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have we prepared room for Jesus in our hearts? We need to prepare room here at the river this Christmas. One week from right now, the Walworth County Homeless Men's Shelter will be dropping off about eight to ten men who are homeless. We are part of a countywide um, group of churches and organizations that during this season, when it's cold, that we welcome these men into our churches. And they'll be staying here for a whole week, starting next week, Sunday. It is compassion in action. Why do we do it? Well, Matthew 25, 40 says this. Then those sheep are going to say, and by the way, we're sheep in this part. Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. As I prepare for every mission trip, for every outreach to people who are hungry or homeless. Every time I always consciously put on the attitude that I'm serving Christ himself when I do these things. I literally believe that I am serving Jesus. That changes my whole perspective and my attitude on helping other people. It's Jesus in disguise. And when I go out, wherever I go out, whatever I do, I welcome people like I'd be glad to see Jesus. And if you've ever been on a mission trip with us or an outreach with us before, that's what we do. And that's what we should do. This year we're kicking it up a couple of notches. This homeless shelter, 2012-13, they served 69 men. 2013-14, that's last year, a total of 58 men, not all at once, 58 men were blessed. During polar vortex winter, how much did we complain about the weather? Wow. They have nowhere to go. Yeah, know where to go. Currently, there's about seven to ten guys that come around, and they'll be here next week Sunday. Let's talk about reputation for a minute. Four years ago, when I started getting involved with the shelter here, the river had the worst reputation of any churches for how we treated the homeless. You have no idea how angry it made me to hear that. We had volunteers that actually took heaters out of the rooms where the guys were, were saying, <coughs> saying we were a poor church and we needed it more than they did. Our attitude was one of like a prison guard to prisoners. I couldn't believe that. I can't tell you how angry that made me. One of the worst reputations in the county for how we treated men who were down and out. Last year, and I asked them every time, I asked the guys, 
I ask the on-site coordinators, how are we doing? How are we doing? Lonnie, who was the on-site coordinator last year, he said, you guys are the model now. You're the model that we want other churches to embrace. Teach the rest of the churches and organizations how to do this. Because we love them as we love Jesus. When those men come, one week from right now, it's God sending Jesus right to us. We don't even have to go outside the door. He's sending Christ to us. Yeah. A model. What does the world look like through the eyes of those special men who are coming through? This is one of their responses. I'm worried. I'm afraid. I'm rejected. Homeless. Hungry. Forsaken, thirsty, sad, alone, empty, lonely, scorned, broken, wanting somebody to love me. But I still love Jesus. The men who come in, many of them have super strong faith. Super strong faith. Because God is all they have. I used to think that I was coming to bring Jesus to them, the poor unfortunate, lowly ones. But my life has been blessed so much by these guys. They got plenty of time to think it over, to be in the Word, to sort out things. They don't need sympathy. They need to be treated as God calls us to do it, with love with love. If you have a cell phone, a smartphone, please get it out and log into Facebook. I'm serious. Log into Facebook. I kind of like a church where you can go on Facebook during the service. <laughs> It takes over 80 people working for every week that we host the homeless. We have one week starting next week, Sunday, and then we have a week in February the 8th to the 14th and March 8th to the 14th. This year we have three weeks. It used to be more churches were involved and other churches dropped out. We got a house on. We get this is the facebook.com slash the river delavan. Of those 80 something positions that we have, over half of those are already full. Over half of those for everything from bringing food to um, staying overnight. We have two music nights. The guys love it when we do this. We just get together music, we get together things, and we have a jam session twice a week. We play and then we hold out the guitars and say, who here knows how to do this? And it's a, last year we had an amazing, Marco, an amazing guitarist. Who would have known that it was disguised as a crazy man? <laughs> there is a long list on this website of everything that we still need so that we can represent Christ well. And we can welcome these men well. We need six people after the service next week, Sunday, to set everything up upstairs. Gotta have it. The guys are being dropped off about 1130. And we gotta quick get that all set up. Other things we need a lot at the end of the week, which is Sunday morning, that would be the 21st. We gotta quick get everything cleaned up, broken down so kids' church can be up there. Great needs. How do you know what's available? Because it's signed up online, and if it doesn't have a volunteer button on it, it means somebody already took it. If you don't have a great phone, if you got a stupid phone instead of a smartphone, all right, we'll pray for you. Um, <laughs> Texas, don't need read no Texas. 
You got that saying? We have two iPads in, uh, in the entryway at the info spot. Two, uh, two iPads. They'll help you sign up. Find somebody who does have a smartphone and sign up that way. The neat thing about this is it even sends you a reminder. It sends you a reminder a day or two ahead of time. Us working together for these guys, these great guys. Let's pray for our week starting next week. Dear Jesus, you know what it's like to be homeless because you were homeless. You had no home while you were in active ministry. Yet you loved every leper, every person of bad reputation, every orphan. Give us that love. Give us that heart that can see you in every set of eyes. May we welcome these men and indeed all who you send our way. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In preparing for today, I found a great quote that I kind of like to start closing this message with. It's by Paul Tripp. What I did is I just took out the church words and I put in river words. But the message is there, there. It's great. And this is what Paul says with the translation. This church is not a theological classroom. It is a transformational. Fess up, turn your life around, make things right. Let the past go and get the darkness out kind of place. Where the flawed, wounded, and broken people place their faith in Christ. They gather to know and love him better and then learn to love others as he designed. Does that describe us? I hope that describes us. If you want the big words, just look up Paul D. Tripp, and that's for the long church words. Next week, the theme is Love Came Down, a powerful week, where we'll take a look at Jesus' birth, at receiving God's love and allowing it to change us. There will be extra prayer and worship time next week Sunday. A special message about receiving Christ in our hearts, our lives. Welcoming Jesus in our hearts. Please begin to ask God who you're supposed to bring here next week. Sunday and pray for those people. We will have new guests. All are welcome. Let's pray. God of the universe, you love us. Thank you. Despite our failings, our flaws, our selfishness, you love us. And you ask every one of us to prepare a place for you. Not a place far away at some unimportant part of ourselves, but in the deepest part of our minds, hearts. May we all prepare room for you. That means willfully setting aside our will, our ways for your will and for your ways. This is a joyful season. You are God. You are Emmanuel. God with us. And for that we have joy. And we praise you for it now and
and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.